160. He's gone. What's up, guys? We're back here, and this is going to be the first installment of this project, Rotley. And um, so, when you get a big project like this, where really nothing works, but you have a whole bunch of expensive parts bolted onto a frame, it's important to make lists to be systematic. You're the one to take an engineering approach to it. And you want to make sure that you you get everything uh, done and you do it in a way that makes sense. And on this project, the biggest problem is going to be all of this garbage wiring. Um, I've already completed the first step, which is cut off all the other guys' zip ties so that you can uh, figure out which wires are going where. And now I got the other half of the tank off, so we have full access to everything. And now I'm going to do a bunch of little things. Uh, I'm going to bleed out the front brake. I know it seems kind of intuitive, right? Why would you bleed the front brake before the engine even runs? But the thing is, this thing's a pain in the ass to move around as it is. So having a front brake is really going to help and that's just one more thing I can take off my list and that way I can test this pressure sensor as well uh, to make sure the brake uh, switch works. Um, and then we're just going to start uh, going through the wiring diagram and figuring out if any of these wires uh, make sense. Uh, it looks like somebody put an aftermarket harness on this because this says Ultima on it. Um, I don't know anything about this box at all so I'm going to have to do some googling. Welcome to part one. We're just gonna gonna start from the beginning and, and work our way through it until we get this thing uh, running down the road. Well, the front brake bled out well and now it works, but the rear brake seems to only want to function uh, in one direction. As you can see, this is just kind of moving in and out, and it's not working the piston. And if I apply uh, air pressure back here, this will shoot back out and I can get one good pump out of it. And the thing is, I have no idea uh, where this, this is obviously a custom billet master cylinder, so naturally I have no idea where the fuck you get something like this. But um, we're gonna take it apart real quick and see if we can maybe figure out what's wrong and just clean it up and fix it. So there's the master cylinder assembly, you can see it's all nice billet machine, blah blah blah. And the push rod goes in there, and as you saw earlier, it wasn't really doing much. So we're going to take out the snap ring and see what's going on in here, uh, see if we can maybe fix it. look down in there you can actually see the black fitting on the other side so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna clean this up nothing seems broken or damaged um, so we're just gonna clean this up and uh, what the issue is so my guess is this assembly looks something like this and the reason for that is if you look down in here there's two holes there's two holes a big hole and a little tiny pinhole and what happens is as this pushes, it pushes this and this rubber gasket forms a seal and it pushes and compresses fluid and pushes it out of here, uh, which is how the hydraulics work. And then this return spring is supposed to push back against the lever when you're done. So let's see if we can just uh, reassemble this. Now the real questionable thing is how you get this back in there because as you can see it's flared out and it's flared out kind of in the wrong direction because I don't think yeah it flared out like that so that probably sits like that you drop that in there see so we can very very gently work this rubber piece back in here it's it's got to make a really firm seal and there it goes so you can see in there you know as I push it it springs back and uh, Yeah, so that should be right. So that's where the cup goes. So this should, to be honest with you, this almost feels like it's the wrong diameter. Because it, I mean, what I'm doing here is taking a piece of uh, pretty fine sandpaper and we're just going to sand the outside edges of this down just a little bit and see if we can help clearance it. Because I think that's the issue. 
whoever assembled this originally either used the wrong part or um, you know something wasn't quite right with this and because this I mean it can't spring back right look at that when you push down it, it just it can't spring back on its own so ideally you do something like this in a mill or I'm sorry in a in a lathe but since I don't have a lathe We don't have any, uh, any dust or anything in there. So there you go. You can see it springs out, and obviously right now it's dry. Once uh, all this gets lubricated again, it's going to work even better. Go put some oil in that chamber in there. Oops. Look at that. She's a. She was a squirting. Yep. So now. When we cycle the mechanism, it springs back. Now, why something like this that's all custom and billet and on this really expensive motorcycle wasn't properly assembled or properly machined? I have absolutely no idea. But it just goes to show you some of these parts um, they get replicated in China and not very well. Um, I actually don't know if this is a Chinese product or not, so I, don't, I guess I shouldn't talk shit. But... Uh, Either way, a little bit of uh, base mechanical knowledge, stuff like this, is really easy to fix. So that right there is a perfect example of why bikes are so expensive to build, especially custom bikes, and they take so much time. So I started, uh, and I was like, okay, we're going to do a real quick brake change, you know, just flush the fluid. It's a basic thing. I always do it. Um, and I ended up having to rebuild a master cylinder, and that took me like an hour and give you an idea, that's all the shit that came out of that, um, out of that line and out of that caliper. But an hour later now I have uh, both front and rear working brakes. What's up guys? So we're back here today and we're working on the electrical system. Uh, I was concerned originally that this Harley had kind of a factory wiring system. When I looked online, those were extraordinarily expensive. But it turns out that it has a system called the Ultima, <clears throat> or a company called the Ultima. And thankfully their wiring diagram is readily available. The drawing number is 18-533 and you can find it all over YouTube or uh, all over uh, Google if you need it. So I had a bit of an issue with the starter but now I got that figured out. Uh, and so I have the spark plugs out of this thing right now. This is just to show you guys. And if I turn the key on and start, the engine works like a big old air pump. Which is cool. Basically, thanks to this, I figured out which wire goes to the starter and which wire comes back from the starter. Uh, the other thing I found is that there are two spark plug holes here that have big, fairly modern type spark plugs in them. In fact, they're kind of an interesting design and you don't really see too many of these um, with this big head on them. But interestingly enough, if you look down inside of here, there's like a, another set of spark plugs that um, doesn't have a coil, doesn't have anything. They're really, really small and they appear to be you know, styled after spark plugs you find in like the 50s or the 60s. So I don't know if these are like dual spark heads or that were like conversion year or what the deal with that is. But it's kind of interesting. Anyway, so now that we have this bad boy cranking over, the cool thing will be is put these spark plugs back in and uh, see if we can in fact get it to fire. 